people. And um, on occasion, some of these people were graduates of my alma mater, and I thought that was a coincidence not worth, worth mentioning, something that I would just keep to myself. But in this case, I'm most proud to uh, tell all of you that I have here a classmate of mine from the University of Pennsylvania and from Columbia, both the school that I went to, this same gentleman also went to, except he separated from me by several thousand miles. And when I met him in China last spring, I was very surprised to learn that he went to the University of Pennsylvania. But when he uh, was at my home yesterday for dinner and he started telling me all about Columbia, and I asked him why he knew all about that, and he told me that that's because he got a master's from Columbia also, I always wonder now what other surprises he has in store for me that he hasn't told me about, because this was also quite a surprise to me, and it makes me even happier uh, to see him here. Uh, last spring, when 19 students and I and my wife uh, traveled to China, we had the very great pleasure of visiting what many people told us was the finest architecture school in China, the Nanking Institute of Technology. And tonight, along with my classmate and his wife, we have here uh, two of the faculty of the Nanking Institute of Technology, uh, Professor Liu and Mrs. Liu, who is assistant, uh, as associate professor of architecture at the Institute, uh, have uh, come here via Hawaii and San Francisco and Los Angeles and Seattle and Kansas. And from here, they're going to Chicago and um, Yale and New Haven and MIT and Columbia and, and Penn and Washington, D.C. and London and Paris. It's very hard for me to, I, I probably left a few places out. Um, and then they're going to go home and rest. And uh, uh, I don't want to extend this invitation any longer, so I'll just tell you that uh, Professor Liu is uh, head of the graduate programs in architecture and the programs in design at the Nanking Institute of Technology. He gave us a very warm reception when we visited there uh, last April, and we we're really delighted to have both Professor Liu and also Professor Liu uh, here with us this evening. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce them. one of the professors uh, to talk about uh, some of the finest uh, gardens in the world. And uh, with no further ado, the professor will uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you much, girl, uh, Professor Rosenman. Thank you for the kind words you said about this. And uh, uh, I should start with ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, we in the back. Oh, okay. And ladies and gentlemen, and uh, professors and uh, colleagues, and forgive me if I just call you ladies and gentlemen, because uh, before I left China, I was told that I should start uh, all my speeches by addressing every particularly important person in the audience. But I see today just so many of you are particularly distinguished person. So what can I say? Actually, both my wife and I am both honored and uh, fortunate to be here at all. Honored because by the invitation of the Department of Architecture uh, of Ball State University, and uh, which some friend told me that uh, there is no Ball State in America, this must be the 52nd uh, state in America. Well, I, so I find out uh, yes, only yesterday there wasn't uh, any Ball State, but uh, there is a famous Ball State University. So we are proud and we are honored to be here and uh, by the presence of all of you. And uh, we are fortunate because so many people in our country in the past few years and uh, at the present time, 
they wanted to come here and visit America and get experience and see all those nice buildings in America. And we are only among the few who got our visas and uh, passport. And finally, we made it and we came here. So we are both honored and uh, fortunate to be here. But today, I'm not just uh, telling you that uh, we are honored and fortunate. I have my subject today is about Yang Lang Gardens. Yang Lang, that means south of the river, and which river? That's the south of the Yangtze River. And uh, Nanking was among the uh, Yang Lang places. And uh, among those places are Su Chao, Wu Xi, Zhenjiang, and the Nanking. And uh, Nanking is where I come from. I would like to start with a little introduction, just to tell you something the difference between a Western garden and a Chinese garden, and especially a Jiangnan garden, then followed with a slide show. Because I believe the slide uh, picture speaks more than a thousand words, so I, won't, I only want to uh, make a very brief introduction of, uh, of what's the difference between a Chinese garden and uh, Western garden. A Jiang Lang garden, that's the south of the Yangtze River garden, embody all the characters of the Chinese landscape art. Firstly, there are several features. Firstly, they are private gardens. In the old days, they are owned by some uh, landlords and scholars and uh, 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 some masters and uh, retired officials. Primarily, not a single wide open space, but are divided by walls and buildings into small courts. Unlike the Western world, buildings and not plant life dominate the garden. That even without flowers and trees, it will still make a garden. No garden is complete without buildings. And Jiangnan gardens are mainly composed of buildings like house, pavilions, and kiosks. The garden architecture in China is so delightful and informal and playful. They are mostly constructed of wood, open when, on one or more sides. Most of the houses are open on four sides, so as to command favorable views. One form of paper architecture is to build a hall in the manner of a houseboat, which I'm going to show you. And uh, uh, stand here or in the water. Secondly, as the aim of the Chinese garden is to charm, to delight, and to give pleasure, a Chinese garden is indeed a landscape painting in three dimensions. But like all Chinese paintings, they are subjective. It is said that to be a good garden architect, we must be a great painter. Chinese garden design is primarily a branch of pictorial art. It has neither reason, logic, nor formula. No explanation. For instance, the paths, verandas, and the bridges to be planned in a zigzag fashion, except that they are picturesque. This oftentimes gives a rococo look to the Chinese garden. If a visitor to a Chinese garden, before wandering too far, should pause, and he could catch glimpses that transcend space and volume and resolve the whole into one flat surface that they would be thrilled to realize how closely its design resembles a painting. The Chinese word for landscape, landscape painting is shang shui hua. Shang, that means hills, and shui, that means water. Both are uh, necessary elements in the formation of a garden. And uh, hills is used to illuminate, and uh, here the water to induce tranquility. And the third feature is the Chinese garden are usually enclosed in high walls 
because they were uh, private gardens, so they were enclosed in high walls. This area is usually subdivided by walls in order to make the total area look bigger. Sometimes, with the verandas running along one or both sides of a wall, in most cases, the blank surface of the wall is relieved by a series of tracery windows. Patterned with thin brick or tile and whitewashed. The garden wall is invariably whitewashed, so that lends itself admirably to bamboo shadows thrown on it by sunlight or moonlight. White with green foliage and black roof tiles and woodwork, it forms one of the dominating colors in the Chinese garden. The top of wall is usually undulated and relieved of its heaviness by tile tracery. The wall is seldom straight, but winding and creepy and with doorways and window grills or tracery which are designed in various ways and are also characteristic of the Chinese garden. The doorway is shaped like a moon, a vase, or a floor petal. The picture frame is more attractive than the doorways, through which a vista arrests the eye. The fourth feature is a unique one, which is the rockery and on which half of the charm usually depends. In most cases, rockery composed of that kind of stone which derives its fantastic shape through the action of water. We call it lake rock, because it is uh, forage in the uh, west lake uh, near Suqiao. And um, after centuries of washing and scouring of water, it becomes porous, stale, and grotesque. We seldom enter a Chinese garden without seeing rockery, either in the form of peaks, embankments, hills, or grottoes. Sometimes the rock here dominates the entire garden. Rockery links admirably plant life and water with the multitude of buildings standing halfway between nature and human creature. Last one are flowers. Flowers are not often, uh, often mentioned because besides giving perfume, they are invaluable to poetry. The most uh, aristocratic being peony. Lotus, plume, laurel, and chrysanthemum. No garden is complete without bamboo. So uh, you can see there are a lot of bamboo uh, in the garden. In short, the art of gardening in China is the imitate, uh, intimate, I'm sorry, intimate human and the sophisticated thing. Even on a palatial scale, a Chinese garden does not lose the intimate quality. For in the day out of a Chinese garden, we are relaxing and not recent rules. People wander in the garden, the long verandas, narrow doorways, and uh, winding paths in a Chinese garden are not meant for a crowd. It is not a place for recreation. It is essentially for contemplation and solitude. Now I shall begin with the uh, uh, slides. Just 
part uh, with uh, to show you some of the Chinese paintings because we resemble a Chinese garden as a, a just like a Chinese uh, traditional uh, painting. This painting is done in the Song Dynasty, and you see the master of the garden sits in the middle, and his household gathered around him. And there's the big terrace, and uh, with the uh, ancient trees, old trees with lots of layers and uh, flower pots uh, put uh, here and there. This is the kind of garden the master or the scholar wants uh, his garden to be. And the next, you see the scholar sits uh, beside the lingering street and uh, all by himself. This is uh, the way he wants the garden to be. It's uh, just uh, uh, sit there in solitude and music all by himself. And here we see that uh, there's a, a little hut among the mountains. You see the scholar standing here and just outside of the, uh, his study, there's a grotesque uh, rockery and uh, uh, strange uh, trees and the covered verandas here and there. And uh, among that, uh, uh, is the, the mountain. And uh, the Chinese garden was a beautiful thing. It is not like a Western garden. In Western garden, you can have uh, a garden without any building in it. But in Chinese, uh, a garden must have building. So the building is the necessity in the formation of a uh, Chinese garden, especially. You see, this one is called a main hall. And just in front of it, it has a big terrace. Here is the raining of it. And this terrace facing south. In China, every part, every people pay a lot of attention to the orientation of this uh, main hall. And this is the, the place the master or the scholar he uh, invite his guests to stay here, sipping rice wine. You know that the brownish uh, rice wine and uh, reciting poems or playing chess just on. Uh, this uh, terrace. And uh, it's isolated in the middle of a town, and you can only get there through the bridges from the, uh, either side. And uh, this is the, the household I just mentioned. It's a strange and a queer and ornate uh, hall. And uh, in front of that is the raised bed just like the raised deck of a uh, boat. I think the reason why the master of, the, uh, of this garden wanted to build a stone boat, uh, the reason is the pond is too small, and he wanted to sail in the water, and uh, he cannot do that, so he built a stone boat instead. So he can uh, stay here and have his uh, uh, backpack help here, and maybe some uh, singing I've seen some girls play here. One of the uh, uh, playful or toy-like buildings is called a kiosk. The platform is uh, most of them uh, square, and some is uh, octagon, uh, as a hexagon, and some is octagon, and some in fan shape, and some is uh, the double square, and some interlocking square. And uh, always uh, the op, uh, occupies the, uh, the top of a hill, just like the one we have here. It's called the Changdan Ting, which is located in Suqiao. And uh, if I uh, make a direct translation, that's the chaos of uh, surging waves. It occupies the top of a hill. And the roof form is a graceful sweep of curve from the top of the ridge to the east. And uh, here, at the corner east, it raises the upward, lifting upward, as if it's like the uh, wings of a bird as if it's going to take off. And uh, in China,
Chinese would say that you can eat rock. It's just like the wheat of a bird. And uh, that's the elevation of this chaos uh, of surging wave. You can see that uh, the roof is like this. One of the main features is uh, water body. Almost in every garden, it has a pond in the middle of that. And here's two gardens I was, I'm going to show you later. This is called Wan Suyuan, the water body right in the middle of the small garden. And this garden, the name is uh, Retired Fisherman Garden. I don't know whether any fisherman retires or not. But this is called the Retired Fisherman. Uh, and the other one, I'm sorry, I have to make a direct translation of that. It is called uh, the retired stupid politician's garden. I'm sorry if you, there's uh, some politician here. But, uh, but the name is uh, uh, either big for himself, for mother's sake, because he was uh, very modest. And he was a modest. And uh, maybe he means for the other person, other politicians, because they ousted him from the office, from his post. So he was angry at those politicians. But anyway, uh, this this is called Ge Zheng Yuan, or the, uh, I don't want to repeat it again. <laughs> and uh, just beside those uh, ponds and uh, pools, there's a lesser kind of building we call water pavilion. And uh, it's always built near uh, a pool or above it on stairs. But this one is built just near a pool. Here you can see this bench around uh, this uh, uh, pavilion, which we call a beauty's rest. It's supposed that beauty girl sits here and uh, lean on the railing and looking into the water to see the goldfish or lotus flower in the lake. But she doesn't she just turn back because there's no gold water, the no gold fish in the water, I think. So there are water. And here we have the covered veranda and with crater windows. One of the uh, uh, features of uh, Jianglang Garden are covered verandas. Here we see the verandas are used to connect buildings. It uh, divides yet to unite all the uh, other spaces uh, in vir by virtue of its uh, openness and uh, uh, objective. And uh, the, the, uh, yes, you to connect buildings. And uh, we learned from geometry that uh, the shortest distance between two points is uh, straight line. And but it always leaks back and winding here and there. Of course, it leaks to connect buildings, but it always uh, it doesn't take the shortest distance between two points. And sometimes it uh, uh, has a little distance, keep a little distance away from the wall, so it forms a little space between the covered veranda and the wall, and uh, used to plant uh, flowers, bamboo, or uh, rock put rockery in it. And sometimes at the end of a long corridor, there is a little space at the end of it, to serve as a vista to the long corridor. And here we see that uh, one of the, the covered verandas here, you see it uh, keeps a little distance between the wall and the veranda. And uh, here we can also see the ceiling of a covered veranda. It is uh, uh, made of a grayish thin brick about, uh, uh, let's say, eight of an inch thick. 
and uh, is supported by curved uh, rafters. And uh, the covered veranda always have uh, wooden pillars and it gives you a feeling of uh, lightness. And here's another form of covered veranda. And you see the, the top is curved, we call this a rolling top. And the, the beam under it is also curved and uh, elaborate the top. And it leads to a, a rockery. And here's another covered veranda. You see, there's a little space between this covered veranda and the wall. This veranda, I guess, is uh, from here. And uh, here we have a bamboo shoot rockery and uh, some uh, foliage. And uh, there's uh, some, uh, you call it, uh, wild bamboo or something. And so on the other side of it is a begonia tree. In the walls, there are all kinds of openings. And the openings, we have a square one, a oblong one, and some is in octagon shape, and this one is in begun air shape, and the most popular one is rock shape, and this one has the peach shape. It looks like a peach, and uh, upside down, of course. And uh, this is a gourd shape, and this, uh, like, this one looks like a small glass. And uh, in the corner of this uh, somewhat square or rectangular openings, it has a bracket uh, cast of same brick like this. And this one is a rock one. It serves as a picture frame. And uh, you can see uh, a fragrance of the scenery beyond, and uh, you get this, uh, a fragrance of the, the, uh, the courtyard. So this one is taken from Su Chao. And uh, this one is in the begonia shape, or you can say it's a four-leaf clover shape. And uh, we have this here. Oh, yes, here. Just like this. And uh, there's always a cabinet above that. This is for time you will go to some secluded place. And you can get the fragrance of the scenery beyond. This one is taken from Su Chao. You most, maybe most of you know Iron Bay. And uh, this was his grandfather's garden, with, uh, Su Chu Ling, Lion's Garden. And uh, uh, doors and uh, windows. Most of the tennis there has uh, a square windows, and some windows are in uh, octagon shape and uh, hexagon shape. And uh, most of the windows has a uh, brick wood on top of it, just for just a decoration. Actually, it doesn't have any uh, functional purpose. But uh, most of the garden uh, door or window, it looks like a French window. It opens from top to the uh, bottom. And in the fine day, they open all the windows, the doors open. And uh, so you can have uh, a fine view of the courtyard. And uh, we can see that you bring the inside out and outside in. And another thing, uh, if you can notice, maybe it's not very uh, distinct. This kind of uh, pantry, uh, that has work, we call it broken ice, because it's uh, like, just like a, uh, ice that's uh, broken by something. And now we have come to the traceries in the walls. Here you see there's a different kind of uh, tracery windows. They were always equally spaced, but uh, of different kinds of pattern designs. This is uh, a free design, and uh, here we have some free design. And so here we have a geometric pattern. And this one just like, looks like a floor panel, uh, 
and uh, this one is uh, Anglican one. They always uh, keep uh, equal as space. So a wall actually it defines a space, but yet to you light with a little space, you can look through it. And of course, in the summer time, you get the cool breeze uh, from the other part of this uh, 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 this window. And uh, here's another very clear uh, uh, tracery window. It uh, resembles a lantern, a mis lantern, and uh, of course a small one. And both of these uh, tracery windows are made of uh, thin tiles, uh, just like this. And the surface is made of plaster and quite washed. Here we see, maybe I just said it, it's getting too hot to be ready to see the video later on. I don't know why it's getting so hot. But this one is not uh, as good as the other one, but uh, that, that part is getting very hot. Let's say it is it for a while. And uh, here you see we you have a different kind of uh, window. This one is uh, a clover leaf, or this clover leaf, and this one looks like a snack. And so, uh, also, in the gardens, we have uh, picture windows. And uh, this one serves as a picture window so that you can see the outside, that uh, a maple tree. And it changes uh, according to the uh, season. In springtime, we have uh, green leaves, and uh, this is one taken in the fall. So we have uh, red leaves, and this looks particularly beautiful uh, uh, in December, uh, in autumn. And uh, this uh, door uh, window, uh, I mean, this window frame is made of wood. It, uh, it uh, resembles uh, a piece of and they're going winding and winding, and the uh, river has an end. So this window has a special end. It's called a longevity window. Because it don't have an, any end, it symbolizes longevity. You can live forever at the river dies. And now I'm going to show you some of that uh, roof construction, because the eave goes upward. You can see the lower portion. This is the ribs of the hip ribs. It goes from the top of the uh, ribs to the bottom. And from here, we have a smaller ribs. It doesn't show here. And it goes upward. And from uh, white overhand, white overhand, we have two tiers of rafters. And the first one is always a long section. And it goes from here to this place. And uh, above that, there's a square section uh, right there, on, just on top of this uh, long ones. And you can have uh, more over them. And uh, this one is just a joint, wood joint. And uh, you join with the rough, uh, with the beam of this one here. So it, sometimes the water comes into this uh, uh, beam, and they get uh, rotten. And then it fails. And uh, this is the first uh, elevation of that. You can see that the, the ridge comes all the way down to here. And that there's a small wood, a, a minor a beam goes upward. And the outside of the uh, corner is, is like this. It's made of plaster. And uh, most of the uh, Jianglang Garden, they have this kind of wall, the tent wall. The same kind of wall, either either used for this place and then to cover it. And uh, at the end, there's a triangular one that's uh, used to drink water from that. This is one of the uh, 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 real caves which has a uh, uh, proceeding 
uh, rich. And you can see this, it's uh, made of, uh, from the Ming Dynasty. It uh, was a uh, white porcelain and uh, with blue flowers on that. And on top of that is a fish. Some of you may, uh, may, be, uh, may heard what I say that, uh, in this afternoon that uh, uh, in the old days we didn't have a uh, sprinkler system and uh, most of the wood buildings hot fire so they put something related, uh, relevant with water on top of the roof uh, to serve as the uh, super switches or the natural sprinkler. And this is a fish. So wherever it's hot fire, the fish will, will make some water to extinguish. <laughs> this is on a rare case. Rockering is uh, another unique feature in a Chinese garden. It gives a lot of attraction, actually, to the Jiangnan gardens. Uh, as I said in my introduction, it's pouring from deep water in the West Lake, which is near, which is in the middle portion of uh, Suzhou and Yixi. And uh, the shape character is uh, Horus, you see a lot of uh, holes, and uh, his hair, not so fat like me, and uh, grotesque in shape. And this is uh, praised as the best uh, in Suchang. If you look at the back side of it, you can see that. He serves as the transition between artifact and nature, and is half basin crafted and uh, half natural. And you see there are lots of horrors in it. And strange to say, it uh, resembles the contemporary sculpture of Henry Moore or Lobucci. It has a uh, uh, positive uh, volume and negative volumes. This is the process the best in Suchar. And here we can see another one. It is also a monolith that we have enjoyed here, and the monolith which is uh, erected against a whitewashed wall and uh, 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 is connected with uh, roses and with some kind of uh, uh, heritage. As I said uh, uh, before, no garden is complete without uh, buildings, and no building is complete without tablets or copper here. Because the Chinese garden is so in close association with the literary realm, so every building is Christian, an individual and the appropriate name to it. This one is called Yekwan, that moon and where you see the moon in this uh, hall. At the hall, it faces east. So you can easily see the moon rises in the autumn day, in the autumn night, from the east. So it's the Yuguang. And a tablet like this calls for, uh, the scale calls for both uh, scale in calligraphy and in wording. And uh, this one is written with the big brush uh, the in strong strokes. So you can see it. And uh, it gives uh, the visitor a uh, literary response uh, which combines the uh, literary uh, visual pleasure and uh, philosophical detachment. Here we see that uh, there are coffins almost in every building it has problems. This one uh, is carved from wood and being filled with uh, light greenish pigments. And uh, we have uh, a picture also of wood, carved wood. And uh, every garden has a uh, door and this door is uh, in the retired fisherman's garden, and it's placed as the best in future 
Matthäus Ende, er sagt das natürlich in der Ausdruck des Sinnkarten, you can see this is smaller one, and this uh, uh, has the same uh, uh, and the white in class and the line with uh, yellow stones. And uh, at the other side, you can palm. That's a typical Chinese style and design. And uh, at the uh, opposite side of this palm is a small court. And uh, it has custom veranda and uh, it has a small hall uh, facing a little palm here. I'm going to show you. So there's a little palm. You can see the rockery uh, line at the embankment of this uh, little palm. With uh, chrysanthemum and rockery and uh, silver window and covered veranda. The color scheme is uh, always uh, dark brown or light red and whitewashed walls. And now I take you to Zhangyuan, which is located in Nanjing. First, I want to show you the plan. Then I show you that uh, picture in sequence. Here is the main entrance. You go inside of that, you see there's a small court with a rockery, that's this one. You cannot get inside of this court, but you take it as a focal vista. And after you see that, you go to the other side and go in, come here to a covered veranda and come, you can see the, the main hall of this uh, garden. And uh, just uh, immediately uh, in front of this main hall is a palm. And here is a rockery mountain. And you find the rock here. And uh, behind this main hall is another uh, palm with a covered veranda here and uh, water pavilion. And just a small bridge at the pavilion. I showed you that uh, sequence. And this rockery is uh, here to serve as a vista to the entrance. And uh, just inside of the entrance, from here, you can see the main hall. This is the covered part of the main hall. And this place is a small palm in the front of it, and the rock, rockery. The rockery was built uh, some 500 years ago, but uh, it connects and uh, only recent years, one of our professors has uh, restored it to its original standard. And uh, this is the rockery. You can see that the water dripping on, from top of the uh, mountain, a rock mountain, rock hill, and uh, to this uh, naked border. So it helps to grow lichens or mosses. And some of the rocks looks like a static light and static light. And the water is dripping from them to the water. And uh, we have uh, creepers here. Yeah. And the right side of this main hall is the moon doorway here. Here you can catch a glimpse of the, the gardens beyond. And the whitewashed wall lends itself to the shadow of bamboo. We call that the trees or pants, the bamboo leaves or the branches on that uh, wall. And uh, there's a uh, crystal window at, at the either side of this. And uh, on top of this uh, wall are piled uh, the caps. And uh, it releases the heaviness of this wall. And here, it's a uh, covered veranda. And on uh, one side, uh, peach trees. And the other side, you can see the rockery, creepers, and some other plants serve as a bar relief on this wall, this whitewashed wall. You can see that. And it, it, that's uh, used uh, to have uh, uh, as a bar relief uh, painting, three dimensional painting. And here's a close up view of that. You see that uh, the rock ray and the encased in the wall and the creepers here and there. It looks very light in the autumn. You can only see the fine uh, branches and peaks of this uh, uh, path. 
And here's some detail on the roof of the Tabas Veranda. You see the triangular uh, tile at the end of this roof, and they also have uh, some uh, uh, cross. That uh, flowers always uh, have uh, some connection with that uh, building. And here we have a small bridge. And uh, it is very clear that uh, a bridge, it seems that uh, always zigzag and never in a straight line and very narrow and uh, sometimes without an railing on either side of this bridge. And uh, it's very uh, get very close to the water. And since you are connecting to the water to be drowned or instead of uh, crossing it. So this is uh, some kind of uh, bridge. And of course, we have another bridge, this uh, uh, flat one and the straight one, also in the same time. And uh, there's a small chaos uh, here. It's, uh, you can see the water pavilion at the end of the pond. And uh, there's a small creek connecting these two floors. And uh, this is the uh, creek on tree. And they also with uh, limestone rock ray lines on both sides of this uh, uh, creek. Now there's another garden. Uh, I don't have the plan for that. It's called the Ho Tso Hu. I believe uh, you have to be there too. That's the Nanjing Sorrowless Girl. This, this is the place for a girl who has, uh, she, has she has a garden story. Sorrow, so it's a sorrow that girl. And uh, just uh, inside of the gate house, you can see there's uh, the two-story building and the rock ring at the middle of this hall. This two-story uh, hall is a unique feature for this garden because most of the main hall are in one story high. And uh, this one is called Shen Silo, that you bring the chess game. Uh, the first emperor of Ming Dynasty, that was about uh, 500 years ago, he played chess with uh, one of his uh, favorite kings. And uh, they played play chess on top of here at the second story. And the emperor lost the chess game. So he, the, he used this building, uh, this main hall, as a mistake. And so he lost the uh, Building to the, uh, his favorite king. And so it is called a Shen Silo. And uh, just enter this uh, Shen Silo, you can see there's a picture frame. First, a rectangular one, and then a round one. There's a statue of the sorrowless girl here. <coughs> actually, it's uh, taken by a, a telephoto lens, so it, it's actually very far away. You can see it's uh, actually in between the two round openings. And you have a close-up view, and the girl is uh, stands here without any sorrow, and uh, I don't know whether they have any sorrow or not. <laughs> you see, the round opening is here, and the statue is here. I, I don't think it's uh, well placed because uh, she's right in the middle of the court and it looks too small. But uh, if I use the uh, uh, telephoto, that it's all right. And, but that, I just want to show you the court. It's called a water court because there's no pipe and uh, 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 just a big pond in the middle of this court which is surrounded uh, by covered verandas and pavilions. And uh, here's another view of this uh, water court, as seen from the second story. And you see that pond is not for uh, sailing. It's just uh, the 
water is used for reflection. You see the reflection of the uh, roof but, uh, uh, in the water. Now we come to Suchou. Suchou is uh, always uh, had a pride of their scholars because in the old days, the Tangling, uh, Guangyuan, that's the highest merit of a, a Chinese scholar in the old days. Uh, Guangyuan has to be exempted by the emperor himself. And the Su Chao has uh, the pride that he has so many Guangyuan. So the Su Chao scholars built to the street pagodas just to uh, pay tribute to their uh, teacher. So this is how the Twin uh, Pagoda near that, uh, well, we can say that uh, institute at that time. And uh, another building is Sucha building. And uh, this was taken from a, a bridge called Maple Bridge, Songchao. And you can see that all the buildings are in one story of mostly two, uh, uh, seven story high, and the, the walls are always whitewashed with the uh, gray tile roof and uh, with the back to the water, to a canal. The reason was that they can travel by the road, but they got their provision, like uh, uh, fuel and rice and the water from the ships. So they carried those things from the staircase upward. But uh, nowadays, they don't carry this because uh, they can get all the provisions from the front door. But uh, you see, now you see that some of the staircases have fallen down already. This, I just want to show you some of the uh, environment of Suchao. Now I'm going to show you some of the gardens. This one is called the Dinger Hill Garden. I only want to show you a few of them because it has a big terrace, just like the Song Canyons I showed you uh, uh, in the first slide. It has also has a big terrace in front of the main hall. And uh, the masters used to gather here and look into the pond, uh, the rockery, and there's some other building features. And which has a, a large pond in the middle of this garden. Here is another view, and in the springtime, you can see just above this covered bridge, it has uh, this area flower. And uh, here I'm going to show you another view of a big rockery. In, from this uh, main hall, uh, carved to wood. Circular doorway, and through this doorway and uh, another window, you can see the rockery just outside of this building and uh, right in the middle of the court. And uh, this rockery is uh, placed as the tallest, tallest of Suzhou, which is called the Guangyun Tong Crown Cloud. Crown Cloud, and uh, this court is also Christian Crown Cloud. Here's uh, another view of this. You see, this is a modernist rockery, which has a big wall at the top, and it's a stair, and the shape is a grotesque, and uh, near a water uh, pool. Uh, so in, the, in a fine day, you can see that uh, the reflection of this uh, rockery in the pond. This is the bigger here garden. And this one is the one I'm going to show you that's called the Fisherman, Retired Fisherman Garden. It's a small garden. It covers about uh, 5,000 square, square meters. It's about uh, 1.2 uh, acres. So it's uh, quite a small garden. But uh, it has all the charm and the uh, character of a typical Jiangnan garden. You can see. In the middle is a pool. And uh, here is the main hall. It's a covered veranda, whitewashed walls, 
and the kiosk looking to the east, and here are some old trees, and uh, well, the, the doctor's uh, chamber, and the gallery under that, and uh, another water pavilion here, and uh, this is uh, the small path leading to it. And here's uh, another small court, which is called Peony Court. I believe that uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, they built one uh, almost uh, like this hall, and uh, they spent more than a million dollars to have it uh, built in Suchow and shipped it to New York. And uh, I believe they, they completed the, the erection of that. I don't know whether it's uh, open for exhibition or not. So I'm going to show you, this is the main entrance to this uh, small garden. This is here. We have a small courtyard just uh, outside of the wall. And you can see that the pavement is begun a shape and with lots of uh, covered veranda. And this is the doorway leads to the small, this small garden. And it's, it has the shape of a kiosk, but it only has the half kiosk. And the other side is just a tan wall with the opening, and which has also all kinds of uh, clear, straight shaped rockery and uh, tile. And just inside, here is the picture was taken here. You can see there's a small creek and a small path leads you to the covered veranda over there. There's a small bridge, and uh, here's the, the, the park. You can see the uh, old trees, ancient trees, and the, some of the uh, uh, buildings there. And uh, at the right side of this uh, narrow pass is a white washed wall. And uh, here you can see that uh, this white washed wall compels you and forces you to look into the water instead of look uh, to the other places. And here we have, uh, and it leads you and it guides you to go to the water pavilion here. Here's the water pavilion. You see, you can see the buildings rest here and there, and uh, it leads you into that, and then you have to turn left and uh, go to the other covered veranda. This is where we are now. We are going to the gallery over there. <laughs> well, anyhow, a water pavilion is, uh, is a place to rest. So we might as well take a rest now. Uh, now we are here in this gallery. I think so we have one, two slides. You see, in this gallery, there's all sorts of opening. There's a rock one, and it leads into the courtyard uh, uh, to the right. And actually, the courtyard is so narrow, and actually nobody walks into it, just look into it. And you can see the slender cast of uh, bamboo that's the inside of this courtyard. So it uh, really serves as a picture frame instead of a doorway. And here we have another opening, and it looks also into the, uh, this uh, small courtyard and to look into the leaves. And here is the octagon one. Or you can look at the, uh, the other end, you see the pine tree just outside of this uh, picture window. So we have uh, so many kinds of uh, openings in this small gallery over there. But uh, you don't see that uh, there's uh, uh, conflicting 
just because they just uh, serve as a picture frames. Just as uh, in a gallery, we have uh, all kinds of picture frames, big and small, and uh, in all kinds of shapes, but uh, they don't cut things with each other. And uh, just at the left side of this uh, small uh, gallery, you can have a full view and panorama view of this part of the garden.
there's another view of this uh, uh, you can see the back the shape of the back and so that's the big usage I face and then here's the study of the master uh, this is uh, another view Here is the stage. It also sometimes is uh, used as a water pavilion. You can see that uh, here, and uh, once uh, sometimes in the summertime, it has floated uh, in the pond. And here's the main hall, just in a secluded place, too. And uh, from this portion uh, here, from the main hall, you can see the yeah. And so they can watch the moon rises from the east. And so just behind this uh, yeah, there's a small court, which is called the Peony Court. This is the building right here. And so this is the one I just said, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. They uh, built one almost exactly the same size as this one. And they had to ship it to New York from Kuchong. Uh, and uh, they also invited uh, uh, 20 carpenters from Kuchong to erect this building in New York. And just inside of this uh, small hall, there's a temple called Dian Chun. That means that uh, you can have peony uh, flowers in the springtime. But uh, after that, you cannot have any peony flowers because it doesn't grow in the summer or winter time. Then it planted all the peony flowers uh, right above this uh, uh, bean. Uh, it's a, that's just a freeze of uh, uh, classical architecture. So there are paintings. And the right under this uh, apartment, there's a picture window. And they praised by most of the Chinese uh, uh, students of uh, garden architecture as one of the best. You can see there's a window frame, and there's a special kind of uh, slender uh, bamboo just outside of this uh, building. And uh, it changes with the season, so it's uh, really a lovely thing to see. Now I'm going to show you that uh, another uh, garden, which I wouldn't mention the name again. And uh, <laughs> it is just Brazilian. Yeah? And uh, sometimes we call this a Manchu garden because it was occupied by some of the Manchu dynasty generals in the 300 years ago and uh, as they are headquarters. And uh, this is only the middle portion of them, and uh, it is also the uh, most interesting part of the garden. Just uh, at the doorway, you see the rockery and the chrysanthemum, and it uh, has the uh, uh, shadow cast on the whitewashed wall, and it uh, gives you a feeling that you are coming to a a small garden. And just inside the, here is the doorway. You see there's a pond to the right of here. And uh, there's a bridge also in zigzag fashion that's here. And uh, of course it's taken by telephoto, so you also see the doorway here. It's far away. But the most interesting part of this picture is that you, you see is at the top of the pagoda. This pagoda was built in the Song Dynasty, that's almost a thousand years ago. And uh, we call this borrowed scenery because the, the pagoda is almost two kilometers away from this doorway. But you still can see that. So it's uh, it, as if the garden is so big that you can see the sceneries of uh, famous ritual pagoda just inside of this garden. So he borrowed the scenery from the uh, uh, pagoda. 
And uh, this is the actual the pagoda, the, the, the top of the pagoda. This was built in the Song Dynasty, just 1,000 years ago. And here you can also see the path leading to that uh, main hall over here. This is the main hall. And you see there's the pebble paved uh, winding path. One side of the path is the rockery mountain and with the chaos on top of it. And the other side is the pond. And this pond is separated by covered bridge and uh, aisles and uh, another covered bridge, a uh, stone boat, and into uh, several small portions. Yeah. Right at the, at the right side of this uh, us is a small kiosk. And this is a very unique feature in a Chinese uh, garden architecture because uh, it is not open. And they open on, on four sides with a circular opening. So you have a different kind of views from each of the openings. And from this one, you see the old trees that the, the palm right in the front of it. And uh, from one of the doors from here, looking to the right, to the, uh, you can see the bamboo outside of the uh, bamboo is here. And there's a chess table right in the middle. So the master and his guest uh, can play chess at this place. And this is a secluded place. And uh, this is the main hall of the garden. It is right here. And right in the front of it is the terrace. That's the big terrace over here. The people like to come to this place and uh, look into the water and uh, sometimes they sit on the railing. Because the railing is so low, it's about 60 or 70 centimeters high. It's uh, a little bit uh, low. Uh, yes, 60 or 70 uh, centimeters high. And uh, this manhole is a typical one. It has a big uh, roof hovering above the slender columns. And uh, this hall is called Yuanxiang Tang, the hall of bar of fragrance. Here's that uh, almost an elevation of the main hall. You can see the big roof and uh, the slender wooden columns and the dark chestnut color. And the people here watching the goldfish in the pond. The goldfish uh, is not meant for to eat, it's just uh, to look at. And people like to feed the goldfish and they swim in the uh, uh, little pond. And here we have uh, another covered bridge that's here. We call this the, the, the small flying rainbow bridge, the Hui Hong. It curves like a rainbow, and it's covered. Actually, it's a covered veranda over the water. And uh, it serves to divide the water into several spaces. And here we have a small court, and we have another small water court, and here is that uh, small bridge, wooden bridge. And just outside the bridge, this picture was taken here. And you can see the stone boat here, and uh, at the far end, there's another uh, building over there. And here is the stop boat, which is uh, used uh, as a stage sometimes. And uh, here's the picture. This uh, picture is taken from here. So you see the stop boat from the other side. And you can see there's a uh, little stone bridge with uh, very low ratings, and the uh, visitors like to sit on that and uh, have a rest. And here you can also see that kind of roof and uh, window. And here's another view of the stone bridge, uh, stone boat, and the stage, and the little rainbow bridge. <coughs> And uh, at the other side of this, this uh, covered veranda, 
And the, this veranda is uh, built above water. You can see it's uh, supported by rockery in the water. And uh, this covered veranda actually serves as a gallery. There are tablets of stone uh, with inscript inscriptions encased in the wall. And the inscription has uh, some poems and uh, maybe record some of the happy moments the master and his guests spend in this garden. And so if a visitor comes here and wander casually and leisurely, he can have uh, some pleasure in looking at the calligraphy and the poems and get a uh, uh, literary response from that. And here's another view of the covered uh, veranda, which is built over the water. Now, this is the end of the slideshow. I would like to say a few words more. As you see from the slides, I think you can, as you can easily see that the Chinese or Jiangnan garden it resembles a Chinese painting in three dimensions. So I used to say that a Chinese garden or a Jana garden is just a, a garden of deception. It's a wonderland of fantastic dreams come true. It's a, just like a, a garden of make-believe. And the one canon was that one finds in a Chinese garden, one finds in the little the bridge and uh, in the evident, the intangible. I think after the slideshow, you all understand what I mean. I thank you for joining me in this uh,